Wednesdays where you guys will be reading the main piece of literature that will cover all four concepts that you guys learned the previous day on Tuesday. You may choose to set this up any way that you would like. Um, usually Reading Wonders will have the option of a animated voice reading to you through um, the computer. Keep in mind when you are doing the Wednesday lesson to be sure that you are hitting um, each concept at every point that you possibly can. The teacher's edition will help you with that. Just make Wednesday's lesson fun, engaging. You choose how you want to present the story or how you want to read the story. All right, so we should be on page 506 and 507. Who can read me the title of the story, first of all? Uh, Denia. Out of this world. The Ellen Ochoa story. Everyone say Ochoa. That's kind of a weird name. Ochoa. Ochoa. Yeah, that's kind of a weird name. Um, who is this story by? Or... Who wrote this story? Xander? By Laya B. Onish. Very good. Okay. Who can read me my essential question for this week that we are going to focus on with this story? Miss Aisha. Why are goals important? Very good. So with that in mind, I want you guys to do a picture walkthrough. It's a very short story. Look at the photographs. Maybe look at some headings. And we're going to make a prediction of what this story could be about. Keeping is the essential question in your brain. When you think you have an idea, how about you turn and talk to someone about your prediction? What could this be about? Have you shared your answer? Talk to Mr. Me or Aiden. What do you think this story is about? Astronaut? Like more than one astronaut? All right, let's come back together as a class. So as I'm listening to you guys, I hear some of you guys saying it's about astronauts. Are we talking about a lot of astronauts, you think? No. Maybe about seven. Who do you think we are mainly talking about? Ellen Ochoa. Okay, Viana. Ellen. Yeah, we're probably going to be talking about Ellen. What is the huge clue that we are possibly going to be talking about Ellen today? Let's flip back to page 506 and 507. What's the huge clue that possibly we'll be talking about Ellen? Sean? The Ellen Ochoa story. The Ellen Ochoa story. And then if you look on page 507, we have a picture of her. So that's probably a huge clue. So since we're talking about Ellen, what kind of story is this? Aiden. Biography. It is a biography. Real quick, before we begin our story, what makes a story a biography? Jamia. It tells about someone else's life. It tells about someone else's life. Uh, give me two more. Let's see if we can remember this from yesterday. Jonah. It, uh, um, it, another person is, a, a person is writing about another person. Yeah, so we have another person who's writing about someone else's life. What is the last one? Sander. Text features like keywords, photographs, and um, captions. Very good. Text features. So, real quick, we already see the pictures. Let's just flip through someone. I don't care which keyword. Tell me any keyword you might see in this story. Flip through the next three pages. Find a keyword. What is one keyword? I just want to know one. Don't really care which one. Sean, which one did you find? Professional. What page did you find it on? 508. And how did you find it? It's highlighted. It's highlighted and it's also bolded. All right, so keep that in mind when we're reading. We have several keywords that are in this story. They will be highlighted for you. And if you also notice, they also look a little bit darker than the other words, but they're really easy for us to notice because they're highlighted. And um, They're kind of bigger. Maybe they look bigger because they're bolded. All right, let's go ahead and flip back to page 507. While we are reading, please point to the words. We are going to be focusing on problem and solution. So every once in a while, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to ask you a few questions on that page, and then we also might fill out this graphic organizer together. Remember, there's always a problem. Our characters will take certain steps to solve that problem, and we come out with a solution. 
So when we talk about the problem, it's your job to try to figure out what steps did this character take to solve this problem. All right, so you might have to do a lot of rereading. That's a skill that we also learned yesterday. Reread to find the answer or maybe to better understand something. So our astronauts, we have the problem of being weightless. Okay, so unlike Earth, Sean, we can walk around and keep our bodies on the ground. In space, we have a problem of feeling weightless and we float around. So let's talk about some things that they do to um, avoid the problems of weightless. So you might need to look back through some of the questions that she had to answer. There might, it looks like it will, most of those will be on page 511. So... How do they solve the problem of feeling weightless in space? What are some things that they do? I can really tell that Aisha's searching for some answers, and Aiden looks like he's rereading some things. There are some ways that they solve the problems of being weightless. Aiden, what do you think is one? They have a bag with a hook. Okay, so it's kind of like a sleeping bag. There's one. So, a sleeping bag that has a hook that keeps them in place as they sleep so they don't have to worry about bumping into things. So there's one way that they solve the problem of weightlessness. What's another way that they, or what's another thing that they do? And, uh, Sean? They would find a place to hook on to float in. So is that referring to where they sleep? Uh, yeah, they just find something to hook. Hook on to? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's referring to our sleeping bag. So they have a sleeping bag. They got to find a place to hook on to. It's all on that page. Let's make sure that we're on the correct page, 511. Sander? I kind of already know this okay. to solve. Well, it's not on this. Well, why? <clears throat> they dry up the food so it doesn't get into, like, it, so it's not watery and it doesn't oh, make things Yeah, space away. food's a little bit different just because there's no air up there and stuff for things to stay moist. So they do have different space food but doesn't really have anything to do with being weightless. All right, I want you guys to think about motion. Okay, when we're down here on Earth, we don't have to necessarily worry about um, making sure our legs and arms work because we're always moving around. But when you're in space, they're just floating. So what do they have to do to keep their mo muscles and bones healthy in space? Sander. They work out in at the space shuttle. Yeah, so they have a special maybe gym or maybe some training equipment up there. When you're in space, guys, your muscles, you have no way of moving them and keeping them worked out and stuff. And sometimes when astronauts come back to Earth, they're very weak. Okay, so the reason why we're on Earth and we're walking around is because we have weight that pushes us to the ground and so we're always working out our muscles even if we don't have to go to a gym in space you're just floating around your muscles are so relaxed and stuff so usually what they do is they will maybe be on a bike they strap their feet into the bike pedals because their feet would go floating up if they wouldn't be able to pedal and they bike with their arms and their legs to keep their muscles working so by the time they come back down to earth they can walk they can do whatever they want on earth they have to keep their muscles strong Okay, so they train. We'll say they work out. And I'll give you the last one because it kind of goes with working out. They also train. All right, so our problem is weightlessness. That's what we experience in space. These are the things that we do to help us with weightlessness. What's the result? So if our problem is feeling weightlessness, you float around in space. Why do we do these things? How about you guys talk to someone? Why do you think we do these things? Yeah. 
Why do you think they train, they work out, they hook themselves up? Okay, Lyric, what do you think? So they won't feel weak. Okay, so there's actually a lot of results, so they don't feel weak. What well, could be another one? Sean? So they're prepared for anything that happens? Yeah, prepared for space, too. They have to be prepared. That's where the training comes in. Okay, so they have to be prepared for space. What do you think another one is that could maybe relate to sleeping in a bag, hooked up? Sander? Getting used to being weightless. So that kind of goes along with being prepared, a better way of saying it. Another one, sleeping in a, um, a bag that's hooked up, safety reasons, right? So you have to be sure that we're safe up in space. All right, go ahead and flip our page. We will sometimes have missions that are complicated. When we have a complicated mission, what can we do to make it more successful, more easier? So what are some things that if a astronaut runs into a complicated mission, what could they do? What are some steps they could do to make it just a bit smoother for them? Okay, let's go back and reread. Let's practice that skill. It's not just going to come to us, unfortunately. We have to reread. You can find answers both on page 512 and 513. So, what are some things that they could do that might help them or might make things a little bit easier if they have a complicated mission? Aiden, do you think you found one? You have to take part of beginning an astronaut and solving problems in space. Okay, so if we have all the astronauts taking part together, what's that called? Helping. If we all are working together, teamwork. teamwork. All right, so we got a lot of, usually, like they say, Two heads are better than one, so if we are all working together, our astronauts are doing teamwork, that might make the complicated mission a little bit easier. What's another step that they might take if we have a complicated mission? Go back, reread, try to figure out. How about you work with a partner? and go back and try to figure this out. There are some things that they can do to make their mission a little less complicated. One's working together. What are some other ways? Looks like Xander found one. What's another one, Xander? Mission control will help guide them through every moment of a mission. Yeah, very good. So mission control, that's like another part of NASA. And those people, uh, mission control, they will help guide. All right, what's another one? So we have teamwork. Maybe the astronauts just need to put their heads together and figure out how to solve this complicated mission. Maybe they're going to get a hold of mission control, the people on the ground, and mission control is going to maybe take them step by step. What's another one? Sean? They're responsible for knowing what like, they're responsible for knowing how the equipment is working. All right, so we have people, and they're typically on the ground. We have people who will look at equipment. and they might analyze it. They might repair it. So those are all of our, our steps that we're going to take if we have a complicated mission. So what would be the end result? We have a complicated mission at the top. We got some steps that will make it a little bit easier or smoother. What's the end result? What's the solution? So think about it. If you guys have something that's complicated, you're going to try to figure out how to solve it. What would be the end result? Sander? Making it a little less complicated. 
A little less complicated. Easier. Would you let's think of, I'm thinking of a word. Let's see if you guys can maybe guess. It starts with an S. And it usually means that you have um, achieved the mission. Ooh, ooh. Successful. A successful mission. All right. Turn our page and let's finish off the story. How many times did Ellen go into space? I want everyone to go back and find this answer. So this is called us rereading. We're using that skill that we learned this week. It's also called you being a detective. You're searching for the answer. You're going to find some clues. How many times did she go into space? Miss Kaviana? Four times. Excellent job. Nice job, girl. Okay. On which trip was she in space the longest? So she went into space four times. There was one trip. She was in space the longest. Which trip was that? Again, go back. Be the detective. Reread your passage. Sean? International. Jonah, did you find it? I, f I found the longest one. Okay, where'd you find it? On page... 515. It, it was, it was uh, called Atlantis with 11 days. Very nice. Okay, now on page 515, it looks like we have a timeline there <laughs> with the four missions all laid out for us right in front of our face. <laughs> all right, and Jonah was able to look at those four missions, and he did say in 1994, Atlantis was her longest mission. All right, so sometimes, even when we're looking so hard and rereading, it's right in front of our face in huge letters. So, nice job, Jonah. Okay, finishing off this last page, 515. Okay, Xander, notice something? Well, I was um, on the morning announcements, um, the, word of, uh, the word that we were <coughs> kind of telling us about is realized, and it was on the page. Very good. So he made a connection. Always awesome when a reader can make a connection to um, your everyday activities. So nice job. Okay, now let's talk about real quick, and then we'll wrap this up. Our, our, who can remember our essential question? Uh, Miss Diamond? Why are goals important? Why are goals important? So Ochoa, what was her main goal? What was Ochoa's main goal? Denia? Her main goal was to be an astronaut. To be an astronaut and to go into space. Excellent job. Now, was this easy for her to achieve? No. No, it really wasn't. There was a lot of steps she had to take. So what do you think this person who wrote about Ochoa's life, what does she want you guys to learn from this? Don't give up on your dreams. Yeah, so... We may have some goals that will be easy for us to achieve in life, and then we may have goals that are very hard for us to achieve in life. So this whole point of reading about Ochoa is how she had to go through so many steps to reach her goal of going into space. Did you guys like this story? Yes. yes. Space is just cool all around, right? I'll be an astronaut when I grow up. Well, awesome. Maybe we'll read about Jonah Fetter, the astronaut. All right, nice job. You guys may close your books.